Hey guys, welcome back to CJRSoft. This is going to be a series of videos that we're going to start developing into developing player skill and competence on the field so that way you know what you're doing so you can have a good time out here. Today we're going to go over a really important subject that a lot of people gloss over. How to zero or sight in your rifle. I'm using an M4 here, a VFC M4 as an example, but most of them are kind of the same and they kind of have the same principles. It's just really important to know because if you can't really hit anybody and you don't know where your gun's shooting, it's really hard to call people out for cheating or, you know, teamwork and all that stuff. So, we do want to make sure that we as players are accountable for our own rifles, our own setups. If your rifle's not zeroed and you're not sure what you're hitting, you can't call someone out. It's pretty simple. So at Siege, when we do crony, we do crony with the hop of off. So when you bring your rifle to the chronograph, which you have to do every time, just for safety reasons, we don't know whether you change your spring, whether you're here 10 times before or anything like that. It doesn't matter, everybody gets chronied here. Our limit is 380 FPS on a 0.2 or 1.34 joules with any BB up to a 0.3 uh, with the hop up off. And the reason why we turn the hop off for chronying is the hop up applies a bit of pressure on the BB and people can and have in the past and in other fields cheated the chrono because they turned their hop up all the way on. So let's say a gun shooting at 400 FPS, our limit's at 380, obviously it wouldn't be allowed, but they can crank their hop up all the way on, put a lot of pressure on that BB, the staff won't know, especially at that close range of the chronograph, they'll shoot through and uh, they're gonna be shooting like 350 or something like that. And then they can turn it to whatever level they want when they're shooting and it's still shooting at 400, 390 FPS. This video is gonna cover how to zero your guns. We do have a lot of people that come up to us in the chronograph and say, wow, my gun's perfectly zeroed, or wow, I don't need to worry about my hop up, or what's that? Uh, I'm gonna explain right now and demonstrate why the hop up is very important. So you can see Siege is a very big field. From here, which is the uh, city hall building, to the mansion, which is that building in the back, it's about 140 feet away. You can see with these range markers over here that we have quite a bit of distance to cover. This is my gun, the hop-up is off right now, and I'm shooting 0.25 tracers out of this gun. You don't need tracers to zero, but it's just easier for us for filming and to illustrate a lot of things that go on with your BBs when they're flying. So, right down there, I'm gonna start shooting at, let's say there's a person at the mansion, and I wanna tag them out. I'm gonna start shooting, and you're gonna see where the BBs are going. As you can see from these tracers, the BBs are unable to reach across the field. From here to that little black wall at the end of the shoot house over there is about 70 to 80 feet or so, and the BBs can't fly that far. Even before they get there, they're already starting to curve down. So players, please make sure to turn on your hop-ups. If you don't know what hop-up is, it's basically a little piece of rubber that puts some friction on the BBs. So the BB can have some backspin via what's called the magnet effect. I don't want to get too much into the science in it because I'm not a scientist myself, but most guns have their hop up behind an exposed bolt like this, or a mock bolt. So mine is just a little Lonex unit right there. This is just a standard unit. There's also rotary units. So for most standard units like this, you turn the gear into the barrel to increase the hop up. So first thing you want to do before you get into the, any of the optic or the iron sight stuff, is to first zero your hop up. And then I just zero my optic to the BB's flight path for the maximum distance. So we do see a lot of guys also doing it in the range. It's too short of a distance. The range maybe is only about 30, 40 feet across. If a target is beyond there, you're gonna have to worry about very strange holds with your rifle. I like zeroing for max distance for Siege. That way, if a target's close, I just have to worry about a little holdover. I just hold over them a little bit or hold over where I wanna shoot. It takes a little bit of practice, um, but generally you can hit them every time. You get pretty sick uh, toe shots like that. We'll uh, put that video in for you guys to see that in a bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the hop-up wheel. The hop-up wheel is over here, so I'm just gonna turn it a bit. You start a little bit by little bit. And what you want to get is the flight path of the BB to be as straight as possible. If you have too much hop up, it's going to go straight into the sky. Too little, like you saw there, and it will go into the ground. So let's take a few test shots to see what we got. So still far too little. So let's turn it up a little bit more. Let's see about now. We're getting there. It's going a little farther. Let's turn it up a little bit more. Now the BBs are going all the way up. So if you see, this is the opposite of the effect that you want to see. As you can see, the BBs are going so high that they're hitting the rafters up there. Not good too, because if you're not placing your shots properly, you can shoot out a light. I've had incident, uh, incidences where players are shooting at me and their BBs are going right over my head and they're wondering why they're not hitting. Uh, no anti-aircraft BBs here. Let's try to keep it as flat as possible. So we're gonna turn it down a bit and see what we can get. 
so a little bit too little. My gun has an R hop. Uh, some guns have flat hops. Those hop up systems tend to be really great. You get great groupings of them, but they're very sensitive. So sometimes for those kinds of systems, all you need to do is just a little touch. Like you barely see the wheel move. And it's getting there. We can put a little bit more, just another little touch. Still too much, see? Very sensitive. And take your time with this, everybody. You wanna make sure your gun's shooting straight before you start playing. There's often time between games and before the games start to do this, and if you need, you can always ask a staff member for help. We're all trained to do this. That's pretty good. Maybe a little bit more. But as you can see now, my BBs are fly flying pretty straight. If there was a person right at the edge of the stairs there, I would 100% be able to hit them. So now that that's zeroed, what you can do is my tip is to grab a Sharpie or some other kind of permanent marker and mark off your hop-up wheel. So the way I do that, and not all hop-up wheels are this color, you can use a white paint, a white pen or something that's a, some sort of paint pen. What I do is I'll just mark off like a segment of the wheel and a part of my unit or my gearbox. And then all I gotta do is line up that cog with that dot over there and then I'm able to get the same zero and repeatable results every time. So every time I come to this field or any other field and I can mark off multiple zeros. So if I wanna use 0.28s, 0.32s outdoors, then I can mark it off for different distances. So now we're gonna just try that grouping one more time. Oh yeah, that's really straight. So now we wanna zero our optic. So before you zero your optic, you obviously wanna have this zero because if your BBs aren't flying straight, you can't really put your optic to the flight path of the BB. So to see the flight path, I try to shoot into a dark area. I have tracers right now, so it's kind of cheating. Uh, but the mansion area down there is very dark. White BBs, you'll be able to see it. Another way you can see the flight path of the BB is to shine your flashlight while shooting into a dark area. So I can demonstrate that right now. We'll do the same thing as the tracer unit. That's my flashlight right there. And you can see where the BBs are going. So every optic, going back to the optics thing, and you can close the port after. On AKs, you'll have a little slider. On MP5s, you have a little slider. Every gun's different. Some guns need a screw. Gas guns need a screw, stuff like that. Just make sure you know how your gun works before you come in and play with it. Most of the things can be found in the instruction manual or other YouTube videos online. So right now, I'm running a red dot, which is the most conventional optic that most people use. This is a hollow sun. It's a great little optic. So you want to take off these little protective caps here. Some red dots will have these caps act as their screwdrivers, like mine here. I always recommend getting a dedicated screwdriver, like a flathead, just gives you a bit more precision and you don't have to worry about losing these guys. I just put them here in my pocket. Um, however, some optics have proprietary little screws. So some of the, aim, uh, the clone Aimpoint T1s and the older Aimpoint T1s, the real ones, they'll have these little prongs. Uh, don't lose that. You're gonna have a really bad time if you lose that. So make sure you keep these somewhere safe. So for the optic, you generally have two knobs. You have one for windage, which is left and right and you have one for elevation. Usually the windage knob is on the side and usually the elevation knob is on the top. For holographic sites, they'll be marked separately. Um, but for T1 micro style red dot sites, that's the way they go, as you can see over there. So first thing I tend to adjust is I tend to adjust the windage first and then I adjust the elevation. So by looking at the flight path of the BB, shoot again. Let's say my BBs are flying a little bit to the right of where my dot is. So what you're gonna do is every red dot has different direction markers. For this, it's marked on the inside of the caps over here. So up and stuff like that. A lot of clone red dots, however, I don't know why, but for some reason, they're backwards. So up is always down, down is always up, left is always right, and right is always left. I don't know what they're doing over there, but that's just the way that it is. So a good piece of advice I have is to lean the rifle against the ledge like this, kind of pop a squat over here and just look at your dot and just adjust and see which way your dot is moving. Once you see which way your dot is moving, take a few shots, put your screwdriver over here into the dark area with your flashlight on maybe, or use tracers like I do. And you can see if it aligns with the flight path at the distance uh, of the mansion. Once you kind of get it there, left and right is good. Now you want to adjust up and down. So I always zero my dot to where the flight path kind of ends at the mansion. Okay, 
actually move my dog a little bit more up. Okay, and once that's good, you can shoot and see your groupings. Perfect. So, once that's all done, you can actually mark these two. So if I wanted to mark my red dot here, I would grab the same Sharpie and I would just draw a little line. And I can draw the line on the threads of the screw or to the uh, actual body of the optic like that. And then if anybody were to use this optic or I were to zero it for a different gun and I put this back on, I can just align it to that dot and you get a good repeatable zero. So an easy way to check your zero is to either use the roulette wheel over there or uh, to use one of these targets. You can print out any targets you want at home or you can borrow some VARs. I like to actually use the uh, T-Rex, I don't remember what this one was, but it's I think one of their cadence targets or something like that. I like it because it's a really simple circle. Sometimes what I like to do is I like to mark a dot in the middle, just so I have a bit more of a reference point of where I'm aiming. And I like to put this out to as far as I can and see if I can hit it and then bring it back and check the groupings. So you can put this here on this thing. And then Okay, that's pretty far. That's about, just about 75 feet. All right. Okay. And you can bring it back and check your groupings. All right. You see my grouping here. So not the best, because very caffeinated, very shaky. But as you can see, this is about the size of a torso here. And from 70 feet, making pretty easy hits. Boom, 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 boom. And we got one little fly over there. Right there, not the best grouping, yes I know. But standing up, overly caffeinated, just re-zeroed my gun, didn't, didn't really put too much time into it. That's pretty good. So everybody, that's the quick and easy guide that I have to zeroing here. Uh, if you want, like I said earlier, staff can help you with it. But I just want to reiterate everybody that it's super important to have your gun zeroed properly because if you don't, you don't know where you're shooting and you don't know what you're hitting and you can't really call people out if you don't know where you're hitting. I hope we illustrated why it's really important, uh, why hop up is really important, why you literally cannot shoot across the field if you don't have it on. So get to know your guns guys, practice at home. Come on the field and practice, of course. We have targets in the close range. And we're going to have more videos coming soon in terms of more things for training, drills, getting better at airsoft, and showcasing new features and events at the field. So hope to see you soon, guys. And thank you so much. And thanks, Mr. Vince, behind the camera for filming me today. I'm sure you'll see him soon. 